Are you interested in crocheting toys and you're wondering, is amigurumi hard to crochet? Well, today we're gonna talk all about it. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on whether or not this is a very difficult craft to do. And I'm also going to share my top 10 hardest amigurumi projects that I have ever crocheted. Hi, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and I get this comment a lot. Amigurumi looks really hard. I wish I could crochet amigurumi. I don't think I could ever crochet amigurumi. It looks way too hard. And I'm here to tell you, spoiler alert, it's not hard. But there are some skills that you need to know and that's what we're going to do today. But first of all, before I forget, I'm going to be leaving links for all of the resources that we're going to talk about today in the description box below. So if you like a pattern or you want to take a class or anything that I'm going to talk about, it's all going to be there for you. Amigurumi is like any other skill in that there are going to be things that you need to learn so that you will be proud of the things that you make. And what I want you to do is to separate yourself into two different categories. There's the category of I have never crocheted before. And we're going to talk about those people first and what you need to do if you have never crocheted shade before and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do so that you will be able to crochet any toy that you want. Now let's look at the other group which are people who already know how to crochet but they just need to know how to do amigurumi because there's some different skills. But the most important thing for anyone in either category is to have the mindset that you can do this. It just takes time, it takes practice, and you need to be gentle with yourself and have a little sense of humor that when you make something and it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want it to, laugh about it, know that your next one will be a lot better. But let's go ahead and jump right in to the people who have never crocheted before and what you need to know. My recommendation for those of you who have never crocheted before is to learn how to crochet. And one of the greatest things right now is that Tony from TL Yarn Crafts has just come out with a brand new class on Skillshare. The class is called Modern Crochet Essential Skills for Getting Started. And this is a brand new class on Skillshare and it is an excellent one. But first, if you aren't familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning platform for creative minded people. I absolutely love Skillshare and I'm enjoying this class by Tony so very much. And you may be wondering, why are you taking this class if you already know how to crochet? Well, Tony is a master at crocheting and she has a lot of great topics in this class. For example, how to choose your yarn, understanding color theory, I am so interested in this part, gathering your tools, crocheting basics, introducing colors, color blocks and stripes, and blocking basics and aftercare. Skillshare is totally ad free and you can learn anything from the comforts of your own home. And the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I highly recommend this brand new class by Tony, but there are also hundreds of other classes on crocheting and knitting, drawing, photography, you name it. Anything creative, you will find it on Skillshare. I just want to thank them for sponsoring this video today. I love working with Skillshare and I love all the things that I get to learn. So now that you've learned how to crochet, or maybe you already knew how to crochet, the next step is to learn some of the fundamental things that you need to know to make your amigurumi toys. And the very most important one is to learn how to make a magic ring. I have a video tutorial for that, and I will leave a link for it in the description box below. That is the fundamental, most important skill you really need to be able to make amigurumi. It's in every single amigurumi pattern that I think I have ever made. I can't think of any amigurumi toy that I've ever crocheted that didn't have a magic ring in it somewhere. So get really good at being able to do that and you're going to help yourself a lot. The next thing to do is to actually start making amigurumi. And I recommend starting with something super simple and I have the Bubble the Cat Stir tutorial and free pattern as well. I will leave a link for it too. This is a great way for you to really practice all of those skills. You will start with a magic ring 
spring, you will learn the increases and decreases. You'll learn how to change colors. You'll also learn how to seam, how to add safety eyes, and also do a little tiny bit of embroidery on the face. Those are all the skills that you're going to need to know to make more complicated amigurumi toys. So now let's get to the fun part and talk about my top 10 hardest amigurumi projects that I have ever crocheted. And I found them by scrolling back on my Instagram account and remembering each one of the projects and thinking about the struggles that I had at the time. Here's another spoiler alert. The reason why I want to show each one of these to you is to prove to you that at the time this was a struggle and each one of these skills that I had to struggle and wrestle with now I can do with ease and it just took the practice. So I want to start with number 10 which is the least how do I, what? number one is gonna be the hardest, number 10 is gonna be the least hardest, but it was still hard at the time. So, the first one is Victor Frog. No, not the first, yes, number 10. He's not the first, he's number 10, but that means he was the least hardest. Okay, yes, I've got it right in my mind. This is Victor Frog, and this is from Animal Friends of Pika Pow, the very first one. And he's the very first Amigurumi project that I used a pattern for. And I love how he turned out, but at the time, I struggled very very much because when you are crocheting the little tops of his eyes, there is a connecting chain that you use to connect both of them together. And I really struggled with learning how to crochet back on the chain. That was what I had to struggle with. Now I can do that in my sleep. Also, I have a tutorial for how to add that little tutu to the frog and you can add that to any Amigurumi project that you want to. Number nine is Lula. I love this doll pattern from Noor Abdallah so very much. She is so adorable, but the thing that was really difficult about her was her size. This is one of the biggest Amigurumi projects I've done before, and the sheer size was a challenge for me at the time. Number eight is the Goose from Straw Animals. I love this pattern. I love it so very much, but one of the struggles that I had was the little beak. It was a technique that I had not done before, and you use a little bit of shaping, and then trying to sew it on to the face was a bit of a struggle, but I got through it. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be and it turned out super cute. Number seven is the squirrel from Big Bebez. I think this one is so very cute but the struggle is the different color work to create that little cute face and that was a bit of trial and error for me because crochet naturally wants to lean to the right if you're right-handed and so the color work will not look symmetrical. So that took a little bit of finagling, a little bit of practice, and a little bit of just getting over that it's not perfectly symmetrical. The next one is the Granny from the Zoe and Zach pattern by Granny's Crochet Hook and June Karumi. This one is such an adorable pattern. I love it. But one of the struggles was you make the jacket in a very different way than I have ever done before. And for a little while, I could not wrap my brain around how this was going to work out. But I followed the pattern. I kept going and eventually it clicked and I went, oh, this is what we're doing. That's another reminder to just keep going. Trust the process, especially especially if you have a really well-written pattern and eventually it will all click. Number five is the Bonnie Puffin pattern from Animal Friends of Pika Pow. And the most challenging part of this pattern is that color work around the neck. That one really tripped me up and it was a lot of having to pay very close attention to when the colors changed. Another part of this pattern is that when you crochet the tail, you actually chain and then you work back on the chain. I actually have a tutorial for how to do that that's pickle our kitten hi pickle I actually have a tutorial on my YouTube channel that I will link to as well for how to crochet back on the chain because I get a lot of questions about this exact technique and although the tutorial is for my three little pigs pattern it can be applied to any pattern that uses that crocheting back on the chain pickle don't don't chew on the Christmas lights Number four is the Snow Day Doll by Kika Light, and I have some bad news. I don't think this pattern is available anymore. So I hate to break the news to you, but I don't think you can actually get this one anymore. You might wanna reach out to her on Instagram, but I actually haven't even seen her being active on there for a while. So I don't know that you'll be able to get this pattern for yourself. It is a really beautiful one. I love it so much. But the thing that really tripped me up about this pattern is that the original one does not have hair, and I wanted to 
to add hair. And so I used another one of her patterns that did have hair to help me put the hair on the snow doll pattern. That is something that I hadn't done a lot of before and this one was really challenging, but I think it turned out so great and it was worth the effort. Number three is another pattern from Animal Friends of Pika Pow, the original, and it is the Hairy Wolf pattern. And the reason why this one is challenging and why it was challenging for me and while it actually probably still would be challenging for me is that when you're creating the snout, getting the embroidery just right so it all looks symmetrical and it looks right when you have the color work of the gray and the white and then you put the nose on there, that was very challenging for me. My first time making this little wolf, he turned out really cute, but he's very floppy. But over time, I remade him a couple more times and he got better and better each time. But that symmetry on that snout is and was a challenge. Oh, well, Mr. Pickle. Oh my, no, 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 don't do that. Pickle, no, 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 no. Oh, I am filming all this. And Number two was Marsha Alpaca from Animal Friends of Pika Pow, the original. The reason why this one was so challenging for me is that because you crochet all four legs at the bottom, you then add this little flap that you have to seam, and I found that really, really challenging. And I struggled especially to make it look neat and clean. That's one of the things that I really had to work on to improve was my seaming technique. So I learned a lot from making Marsha Alpaca. So my number one hardest amigurumi project ever was Philip Lobster and he is from Animal Friends of Pika Pow 2. And the reason why this one was such a challenge for me is because I decided to crochet him yarn under rather than yarn over. So most of us yarn over and that creates a V shape, but if you yarn under, which is what Jan Schenkel does in the book, you get an X shape. And I decided that I was going to crochet my very own lobster with the yarn under tech technique. And let me tell you, that was a difficult process for me. I actually did an entire video of the differences between yarning over and yarning under and what my experience was creating this little lobster. So he turned out super cute. I will never do yarn under again. And if you're curious, make sure to check out that video, but he still is adorable. My son absolutely loves him and keeps him in his room all the time. I hope you found this video encouraging and that you now feel that you can crochet amigurumi. It is not hard. You do need to learn some skills. Make sure to check out that Skillshare class, especially if you don't know how to crochet already, or if you just want to polish up your skills and make sure that you don't have any gaps in your knowledge. Remember, you get a one month free trial for the first thousand people who click that link. And I hope that by seeing my top 10 hardest projects, that really it wasn't so hard. It was just different challenges that I had to work through and you can do it too. But as always, stay safe out there and have Happy stitching.